Today I thought I'd show you a few more nice features in the free CAD sketcher. My apologies if I seem to be doing this a bit piecemeal, but there are a lot of new features and honestly I'm just discovering a few of them myself as I play around with it. The first is using the dimension tool between two circles. If I select dimension and then click on both of these circles, or if I select both circles and then click the dimension tool, it offers me a constraint on the length of an imaginary line normal to both circles. If the circles do not share a common center, this will be the smallest distance between them. This can be quite handy, especially if you constrain the radius of the two circles, and possibly even more so if the position of the center of one of the circles is fixed. One caveat, as you can see here, is that this does not constrain concentricity of the circles. If you try hard enough, you can break the concentricity, and the solver will find a valid if unintended solution. If you do manage to get it to break concentricity, you'll have to delete the constraint before you can move things back and then recreate it. I'll set the distance to 1 micron. This reminds me, and if you're of the right age group, possibly you, of the old spirograph we had as kids. This isn't strictly a new capability. It was always possible to do this using some construction geometry, but three quick clicks is certainly a lot easier. Next is quick constraints. You may have noticed when I create circles and squares, the key dimension or dimensions are displayed in a text field. You can start typing a value at any point and the relevant dimension will be constrained. Hit enter to complete the entry. Where there is more than one relevant dimension, such as in a rectangle, the tab key switches between the dimensions without setting. You can enter the first one to only constrain that dimension, or you can hit tab to go to the second and set that, leaving the first dimension free. Click the mouse to create the geometry, leaving any remaining constraints unset. Play around with the various geometries to see what's available for them. Finally, the offset tool. As usual, I'll start with a new sketch on the XY plane. I'll just drop in a square, put a circle on it, trim to make a closed wire. Now I'll select the whole thing and click on the offset tool. As you can see, we now have a nice offset of our existing geometry with a constraint field ready to be filled in or not. As you can see, we can drag the offset around to anywhere we like. The value does not change. Over here on the left, we can select the mode as arc or intersection. We also have two check boxes available. Probably the most commonly used one will be add offset constraint. You should know that this will add a lot more than just one constraint. It's going to constrain all of the geometry of the offset so that it will, for the most part, be parametric as you make changes to the underlying geometry. The other option is delete original geometry. That's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. If you check that, the geometry the offset is based on gets deleted when it's complete. Naturally, there will be no constraints against that geometry since it's gone, and you'll be left with only the offset itself. As with many of the other new features, it could be argued that this is a quality of life feature rather than a new capability, since it is possible to use a subject shape binder or even offset from the part workbench to create offset effects. But it is really nice to be able to do this directly in the sketcher, 
and it does offer additional capability of making modifications to the offset after you've created it. On a side note, I really do find that I'm getting quite used to the new features in the development version of FreeCAD, and I'm finding it harder and harder to go back to the stable version without them. I'm glad I don't have to wait long for all of this to come to the stable version. I like that FreeCAD is providing these new tools while leaving the old tools available. I like that the classic UI is still an option. This is how all software should work. Give the user all of the tools needed to support their chosen workflow. Never dictate the workflow to the user. Many of these quality of life improvements seem to directly address concerns raised by users of other CAD software when they try FreeCAD. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out with the stable 1.0 release. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.